Portals a triumph. In fact, we're making a note here, huge success. It's hard to overstate our satisfaction, but Aperture Science, while they do what they must because they can, might not be espousing proper physics lessons to all of us, no matter what GLaDOS said. But there's no use crying over some possible mistakes, and we should keep on trying to make science less opaque. So our analysis will be done, with a physics lesson we hope is fun, for the people who ever wondered if Portal's rules of momentum and energy could ever hold up in real life. We promise there's cake at the end. To help us think with portals, please welcome back this week's writer, astrophysicist and Star Trek science consultant, Aaron McDonald. Thanks, Aaron. Portal, while a phenomenal game, tends to make physicists go a little crazy. What with its quantum tunneling, selectively destructive material emancipation grills, or, well, everything about the hard light bridge, but one thing that might make real-world sense is its use of momentum and energy to solve puzzles. But does it? So we thought it would be fun to explore these specific principles and learn more about them through the lens of our favorite puzzle shooter. We first have to discuss the concept of momentum. Momentum is the property of an object, in this case humans, cubes, turrets, etc., that combines the mass and the velocity of that object. And if you want to change an object's momentum, you're first going to have to overcome its inertia, which is basically a fancier term for Newton's first law of motion. An object in motion stays in motion, and an object at rest stays at rest. So really, inertia is the resistance an object has to changes in its momentum, specifically changes to its velocity. Therefore, the amount of zappy grabby power, technical term, that your portal gun uses when it picks up a cube is determined by that cube's inertia, how much it doesn't want to move. Now, I know GLaDOS would appreciate this next question. What do we mean by move? Well, that's where we have to define an inertial reference frame, aka an area where an object that doesn't have any forces acting on it doesn't change its speed. But since the Earth is rotating at a constant speed, and we know that portal takes place on Earth, we can say that within the walls of the Aperture Science Lab, we can use a standard inertial reference frame. So as far as testing is concerned, we define this inertial reference frame when we walk into each test chamber. And as such, momentum must be conserved. Because momentum just can't be created or destroyed, and it has to be changed or transferred from one form to another. This principle is called conservation of momentum. Which leads us nicely into conservation of energy, the physics law that Aperture seems to toy around more with than our own sanity. It's a law similar to conservation of momentum in that it states, energy in a system cannot be created or destroyed, but only transferred or changed states. So with all that in mind, the TLDR is, when you walk into an Aperture Science test chamber, that room is your closed system, and the total momentum and energy in it is fixed. When a cube is dropped from a dispenser, it doesn't really seem any different than a cube sitting on the ground, creating a portal on the ceiling and one on the floor under it, causing said cube to fall through and pop out from the ceiling. Because, I mean, that's how gravity works, right? But this is where the conservation of energy is important. For both potential energy, energy an object has due to its position relative to other objects, usually height, and kinetic energy, the energy an object has due to its motion. When a cube is sitting in a dispenser, it was being held at a height, giving it potential energy, and then when it drops, we get that energy transferred to kinetic energy as the speed increases and the distance above the floor decreases before hitting the ground. But when a cube sits on the floor of a chamber, according to our inertial reference frame we defined, the chamber itself, its height is zero. Therefore, it has no potential or kinetic energy. Even though the down-direction gravity pulls doesn't change in the test chamber, with the ability to build a portal underneath a cube sitting on the ground, again, height equaling zero, and a twin portal on the ceiling, you've immediately created energy out of nothing, because now the cube has potential energy, which in our current understanding of physics is impossible. Also, when you're on the top of a platform and you make a portal in the floor that will carry your momentum or kinetic energy once you pass through it to whatever twin portal you've made, regardless of where it is, that instantaneous change in direction, while still maintaining your speed, as well as the creation or destruction of energy based on your height off the ground, breaks all of the laws if we're just treating portals as simple holes to jump through. And in that way, Portal just doesn't violate the laws of conservation of energy. It obliterates them like a poor companion cube lost in an incinerator. So sad. So there you have it. While Portal's incredibly fun gameplay relies on our intuition for how momentum and energy work in order to solve its puzzles, it actually ends up violating those exact physics laws. And of course, this doesn't make the game any less enjoyable to play through or explore. It's just fun to call out GLaDOS for trying to have her sciency cake and eating it too. 
Uh, or, um, you know, uh, we could be wrong and uh, uh, your science and tests are perfect. <laughs> On my signal, we run. Look, a bird! <laughs> but we did just break the rules again. Legendary patron roll call. Ahmed Ziad Turk, Alicia Bramble, Casey Muscha, Dominic Valenciana, Gunnar Clovis, Kyle Murgatroyd, and Orioles1. Thank you so much. <laughs>